All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the annual meeting of the New York Metropolitan Transportation Council. I'm Lynn Weiskopf, Director of the Office of Policy Planning and Performance at the New York State Department of Transportation, and I am Secretary of the New York Metropolitan Transportation Council, or NIMTIC. Today's annual meeting is available in person at the NIMTIC offices at 25 Beaver Street in Lower Manhattan, as well as virtually, and council members are participating in today's meeting virtually. For the meeting audience who are on the webinar, your lines will remain muted throughout the meeting. During the public participation section of the agenda, registered participants will be called on in the order of their registration. Registered speakers who are participating via webinar will be called on and their lines will be open for their <laughs> statements at that time. This web meeting is being recorded and it will be posted on the NIMTIC website within two weeks of the meeting. And at this time, I will begin the roll call. When I announce your agency, I ask that each principal or representative to state your name and agency and, if applicable, whom you are representing. So I will begin with the voting members of the council, starting with the New York State Department of Transportation. Good morning. Marie Therese DeVig is present. Thank you. New York City Department of Transportation. Hi, good morning. This is Yogesh Sangui representing Commissioner Idanis Rodriguez. Of New York City DOT. Thank you. New York City Department of City Planning. Hi, this is Dan Gorodnik. I am the director of the Department of City Planning. Thank you. Uh, Nassau County, please. Hi, good morning. David Viana representing Nassau County Executive Bruce Blakeman. Suffolk County. Good morning, uh, Darnell Tyson, uh, Suffolk County Department of Public Works representing uh, County Ex Executive Steve Ballone. Rockland County. Stephen Powell is representing County Executive Ed Day. Ooh, Putnam County. Kevin Byrne here, Putnam County Executive. I'm joined by John Tully. Westchester County. George Latimer, Westchester County Executive. I'm joined by a number of members of my staff, including Joe McDonald, our Director of Operations. Metropolitan Transportation Authority. Good morning, Mike Schiffer. I'm representing Chair Jano Lieber of, Lieber of the MTA. Thank you. And now for the advisory members of the council, Federal Transit Administration. Good morning, Donald Burns, Federal Transit Administration, uh, representing Regional Administrator Stephen Goodman. Federal Highway Administration. <clears throat> Federal Highway Administration. <clears throat> okay, New Jersey Transit. North Jersey Transportation Planning Authority. Hi, good morning, David Barron, Executive Director, NJCPA. U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Hi, good morning, Elizabeth Butler here representing regional administrator Lisa Garcia. Thank you. Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. Good morning, uh, Mary Kay Murphy representing our executive De director Richard Cotton. I'm also joined by Jay Sheffield. Thank you. Thank you. And the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. Michael Sheehan, New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, representing Commissioner Sagos. Federal Highway Administration able to join? Or New, or New Jersey Hi, Trans? Uh, I, I, I'm not sure if Damari is having uh, audio difficulties at the moment, um, but uh, Gautamani uh, representing uh, Division Administrator Rick Marquis. I know Damari will, will join if she's able to. Thanks. Thank you, Gautam. And uh, New Jersey Transit? All right, well, thank you. By my count and under our operating procedures, we do have a quorum for today's meeting. And so I would now like to turn the meeting over to NIMTIC's co-chairs, uh, New York State Department of Transportation Commissioner Marie Therese Dominguez and the New York City Department of City Planning Director, Dan Gorodnik. Thank you and good morning, everybody. And uh, welcome to the uh, first meeting of, of NIMTIC for 2023. Very much appreciate everybody's participation this morning. 
The theme of today's annual meeting is innovative ideas and new technologies. Uh, as we all know, a number of uh, social and economic trends have been amplified uh, as COVID-19 and the pandemic has played out. Um, and certainly uh, we've seen some of the financial impacts that are still uh, being felt across the board, um, both nationally and regionally uh, as a result of the pandemic. And in really, in an effort to not only meet the challenges that we're facing, um, but uh, to truly plan for our future, new opportunities have arisen both at the federal and the state uh, policy and funding uh, levels that have been truly historic. Uh, we not only have uh, bipartisan infrastructure legislation uh, that we have now uh, received in New York State, but are putting to use uh, and have planned for, but we also have, um, again, historic uh, funding levels for infrastructure uh, at the state level. In addition to that, we've got innovations and in technological advances uh, that are emerging in the transportation sector, uh, literally uh, on a moment by moment basis. And it's really an exciting place to be, uh, certainly given the pace of the advancement that we're seeing. Um, these innovations have also carried along, have been carried along by some of the broader um, social and economic forces that we've seen in our country, but it's also opened up a window to help solving some of the intractable, pro intractable problems that we've seen um, and have faced as a society across the board. And so one of the things that we're very excited today is to uh, welcome uh, our guest speaker, our keynote speaker today, uh, Victoria Sheehan. She serves as the executive director of the Transportation Research Board, which is uh, part of the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine. Uh, Victoria is not only the leader of TRB, but she's been a leader in the transportation industry for her entire career. Uh, she's really had uh, a hand in playing um, out uh, not only a series of transportation funding initiatives at the national level, but as her, in her most recent uh, stint as chair of ASHTO, uh, she really has helped uh, lead the national advocacy uh, debate and um, and uh, use the platform as ASHTO president to inform the Congress and inform elected officials about how uh, transportation funding is actually leveraged uh, across the board. And now in her new role as executive director of, um, of TRB, she's even taking that discussion to a higher level. So we're very excited to have Victoria join us today uh, to really talk about some of the things that we're doing, um, not only uh, at a state level, but how this is playing out in terms of research and preparedness and advancing technology and innovation across the board nationally. Um, with that, let me turn over to Dan Grodnick uh, for some opening remarks, my co-chair, uh, Mr. Grodnick. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, good to see you. And let me uh, add my welcome to all the participants and the audience today. I also wanted to add uh, my uh, excitement hearing uh, from Victoria Sheehan and her perspectives and insights in this rather unique time of challenge and opportunity and innovation, as you noted, uh, Commissioner Dominguez. Um, the action before the council today is also uh, very significant in that we're going to be adopting a $62 million unified planning work program for state fiscal year 2023 to 2024. Uh, and in keeping with the theme of our meeting, I'm excited uh, for the ways that city planning in New York City will continue to innovate and expand how we use data to better understand our changing world. Uh, we know that people are spending time in different places today than they were in just a few years ago, and we're eager to harness new data to better understand the ebbs and flows of our city and also the region. Working together here across agencies and municipalities, uh, I am really hopeful that a new era of data sharing, technological advancement, and collaboration is going to be able to transform our ability to better support the needs of our residents and, of course, our commuters and visitors. Uh, the work program funds NIMTIC as an organization and helps us to meet 
the planning requirements of federal transportation funding. This is also a really exciting time as the entire region takes ownership over the housing and mobility needs of our current and future residents. Transit-oriented development, density near rail stations and other hubs, reduced automobile dependency, these are all things that may represent fundamental shifts in planning approaches for many, but which is the only responsible path forward toward an equitable and sustainable region. These resources will help us to continue to innovate and to plan as a regional council for the larger area that we serve together. Uh, we're going to hear more details about the work program later in the agenda. But again, I'm really happy to be here with you. Uh, Commissioner Dominguez, I'm going to turn the meeting back to you. So thank you. Thank you very much. I greatly appreciate uh, your remarks, Dan. Um, and uh, you know, you've hit it on the on the head. We've got a very um, important agenda today, looking at this larger planning function and how we're literally putting the dollars to work here in the New York metropolitan area. Um, and uh, I would like to turn now to our keynote speaker, who I've previewed a little bit, uh, Victoria Sheehan. Uh, as I said, serves as the executive director of the Transportation Research Board uh, for the National Academy of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine. Uh, it is affectionately known as TRB, um, and uh, I can tell you that they're convening uh, every January in Washington, D.C., attracts upwards of 12 to 14,000 participants globally. Um, to talk about research trends and innovation across the across the world. Um, in transportation, so TRB really does provide the leadership um, in transportation improvements and innovation through trusted and timely and impartial and evidence based uh, information exchanges. Many people participate in that level of research um, and providing advice uh, for all modes of transportation. And one of the things that our co chair. Uh, Grodnick just mentioned is is literally this transit oriented development and how do we actually leverage this? It's a key component of. Of um, some of the information that I know TRB has been researching and advocating for and holding forums uh, for a long time. But Victoria, as I mentioned, has been a leader uh, in this area for a long time. She previously served as commissioner of the New Hampshire DOT for seven years, where her team led the development of New Hampshire's 10 year transportation plan. She worked directly for the governor, for the general court, the executive council to make sure that, uh, that the department was actually addressing the state's growing transportation needs. Prior to joining New Hampshire DOT, she spent 10 years at the Massachusetts DOT, where she led strategic planning and highway performance and managed a $3 billion accelerated bridge program. As I mentioned, she has also served as president of the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials, otherwise known as AASHTO, during a critical time between 2020 and 2021 when we were advancing um, national infrastructure legislation. Victoria holds a master's degree in structural engineering and architecture from the University of Edinburgh in Scotland. And uh, I just want to say again, Victoria, welcome. Uh, Greatly appreciate your time and thank you for joining a NIMTIC's annual meeting this morning. With that, I'll turn it over to you. Struggling to unmute there. Um, thank you so much for the invitation to be here today. Um, as Marie Therese uh, mentioned, I was the commissioner for the New Hampshire Department of Transportation and got to work very closely with her and my colleagues across the country. So today I'm going to share some of my insights, um, both based on my past experience um, and now currently as the executive director for TRB. The title for my presentation today, um, for those of you who are Elvis fans, you'll recognize uh, the title as the name of an Elvis single and also a greatest hits album. Um, but this is a title that I used to use for my presentations uh, as commissioner in New Hampshire when I spoke with MPOs and regional planning commissions uh, to really stress the importance of the work that you do. Um, our infrastructure projects that we're building today may not last forever, um, but you're providing transportation solutions for today, for tomorrow, 
And certainly the impacts of the decisions you make, especially around land use, uh, will impact generations to come. Um, and so um, your work, uh, like I said, um, is extremely important. And so what do we do at the Transportation Research Board? Um, we try to ensure that you have the information to make the best possible decisions and that as new technologies and innovations are advanced, uh, that you actually have the tools to help you implement and be successful. And um, so what is our mission for TRB? It's to mobilize expertise, experience and knowledge to anticipate and solve the most complex of transportation uh, challenges. And we want to do this because we want to ensure that the transportation systems that we're providing um, support and benefit individuals, society, and the environment. Uh, the Transportation Research Board is part of the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine. And this is extremely important to stress. Um, you know, passage of the bipartisan infrastructure law is providing significant investment, not just in transportation, but in all types of infrastructure. And so we at the National Academies are uniquely positioned uh, because we actually have seven program areas um, working uh, with experts uh, from our three academies. Um, and so as we talk about some of the new challenges we have as transportation professionals and the new partnerships that we perhaps have to forge, um, the academies has a portfolio of work that we really can showcase and use to help support the transportation community at this time. Um, so, uh, this slide should be uh, very familiar to you all. This is uh, from the White House um, information on the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, otherwise known as the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law. And so uh, the work that the academies has been doing, especially uh, when it comes to um, the future of our energy infrastructure, um, you know, how can we uh, ensure that we are building resilient infrastructure, not just transportation infrastructure, but across um, all of our uh, utilities um, and other public works infrastructure. Um, most importantly, uh, one of the cross-cutting themes across the academies has been our work around climate and resiliency. And we actually have a climate crossroads initiative that the academies is launching because all of our program areas, including TRB, have been doing so much work in this space that we really want to be able to provide um, a one-stop resource um, and showcase all of those products that we've been working on. Um, but uh, the White House said their, their goal uh, for the IIJA, um, first and foremost, was to ensure that uh, public dollars were invested efficiently and that we avoid waste and that we focus on measurable outcomes for the American people. Um, and that's what TRB does, is we try to provide the solutions that will ensure that we um, are making the right investments at the right time, uh, using the latest and greatest in terms of technologies and innovations, um, and we are always measuring the impact of our work so that we can justify the decisions that we're making. Um, and certainly we're doing work on supply chain, um, on workforce, on equity, on resiliency. Um, and one of the things that we're really focused on at the moment is while traditionally partnered extensively with the federal government and with states, uh, we wanna make sure that Locals and, and tribal governments are also aware of the work of TRB and are leveraging that as they're making decisions as well. And so this is how we're structured at TRB. We have three sort of core areas. We have our cooperative research, um, which is really the backbone of the work that we do. Um, then we have our advisory functions where we actually do research at the request of Congress or our federal sponsors. Um, and then we have technical activities. We convene um, a number of uh, groups to talk about the issues of the day. And so this morning, I'm gonna take you through um, what work was accomplished in 2022 uh, for each of these areas uh, to really help you understand what are those critical issues in transportation that are rising to the top. Now, one thing I should say is our executive committee of TRB is working on a publication that will come out later um, this spring or early summer, um, which will further highlight the critical issues that we'll be aligning our work under, um, but already um, it's very clear what some of those issues of the day are. Um, so first on the cooperative research side, we have four different programs. Um, there's a very robust governance to the programs. Um, so we have a chair of an oversight uh, body for um, each of those programs that work closely with us. Um, but why is our cooperative research program so successful? It's because we're working with stakeholders from project inception, all the way through the implementation of results. 
And so we are really listening to the transportation community and bringing together practitioners and academics who can help solve the challenges that they are facing. Um, this just gives you a little bit of the sense of the history of the programs and how much money is available and who's funding our work. Um, but I'll dive into some of the details for each program so you'll understand a little bit more. Um, so the first program and the largest is the National Cooperative Highway Research Program, um, led by Wasim um, Deklobab, who's our uh, manager um, on staff here at TRB. And really, the tone and the types of projects that we have been completing under NCHRP have really evolved. Um, the projects are selected uh, through our partnership with AASHTO, uh, the Association of the State Highway Transportation Officials. And um, if you hear the current president of AASHTO, Roger Millar, speak, um, he will stress that state DOTs are not your grandfather's agencies. They have very much evolved and they are multimodal organizations um, and they have really shifted their focus and perspective. Um, so one of the reports that we worked on last year, um, it was affectionately called the Moonshot Project, um, but it was to develop this national vision for the future of transportation, not just informed by the state DOTs, but they brought together stakeholders from all different backgrounds um, to talk about how we can um, collectively work together to solve transportation solutions. And so the diagram on this slide um, shows some of the outcomes. There's a lot more research and work to be done, uh, but the tone has really changed towards community-centered transportation. We're not just talking in the state DOT world about safe systems and a good state of repair. Um, we're talking today about providing solutions that support healthy and thriving communities. And um, we want seamless and reliable systems and our systems need to be accessible and affordable. Um, and so TRB is doing research in all of these areas. Um, and as I said earlier, the other topic that's really um, being elevated currently is resiliency and climate change. And so we've had a lot of dedicated investment um, in research in that space. So this is a list of all the other sort of uh, significant reports that came through NCHRP. Um, but you'll see there's a lot of work being done as we think about um, how we can address not just urban issues, but rural issues in transportation. Uh, we're not just thinking about the issues themselves, but we're also discussing how we can attract and retain the workforce um, to solve those transportation problems. Um, recognizing that if we're leveraging technology, we're gonna have to recruit non-traditional workers into the transportation space. Um, so one of our reports was around uh, how do we establish that workforce with the skill sets that will be needed um, by 2030 uh, to both design and construct our systems, but also maintain and operate them. On the airport side, um, Marcy uh, Greenberger is our staff person leading that program. Um, and again, we're not just talking about you know, visioning the transportation systems of the future. We're trying to help the owners and operators of this infrastructure, um, not just plan for that final state, but also plan for the period of transition. Um, so as an example, one of the cooperative research projects um, that we completed last year in the uh, airport space was you know, preparing your airport for electric aircraft and hydrogen technologies. Um, these technologies are coming. Uh, we might uh, be questioning uh, how quickly they will be mainstreamed and deployed, but our airports, even our small uh, rural airports, um, are trying to think about how they can ensure that as they build facilities today, those facilities can be adapted and modified um, and reconfigured to meet uh, the, the transportation needs in the future. And so that's a lot of the work of TRB is um, listening to what's happening in the private sector with industry and ensuring that we are really thinking about how we can successfully implement, uh, recognizing that we are spending money today. Um, and with the unprecedented level of investment in transportation provided by the bipartisan infrastructure law, like I said, we wanna make the smartest possible choices. And so TRB is focused on elevating all of this work product so it truly can be utilized by all of the stakeholders. And then on the transit side, um, one of the recurring themes is equity. Um, it seems to be an aspect of almost every project we're undertaking, um, whether that's you know, directly looking at equity impacts um, or you know, as we're thinking about new technology deployment, um, you know, one of the examples is a synthesis project from last year, considering, you know, the unbanked population and how do they utilize um, our cashless fare payment systems. Um, obviously, many uh, communities are struggling with 
um, a lack of affordable housing and the you know, unsheltered population? Um, is at risk if they are within our highway right of ways or on our railroads? And so certainly topics of that nature have been um, a focus as well. So we are dealing with the, the near term um, while we continue to think about the research needs for the future. Um, and the last section is our uh, behavioral uh, traffic safety cooperative research program. Uh, this one is uh, conducted in partnership with the Governor Highway Safety Association. Um, but there's been a really a crisis on our highways in terms of the number of fatalities. And so uh, that program is a balance of looking for near term solutions to address uh, what we're experiencing today. And while we also think about how technology can um, provide a safer system in the future. And so that's why there, you know, the larger scale projects um, like assessing the impacts of connected and automated uh, vehicles on future safety while we continue to uh, do some of our core programs. Um, and I'm sure many of you have struggled with uh, the deployment of uh, micro mobility solutions such as e scooters and how do we safely have these new types of transportation operate on our systems today. Um, so that's our cooperative research. Um, I encourage you to go out and um, you know, survey our website um, and uh, all of those report numbers I provided so that you'd have the information um, should you want to go and read um, the outcomes from the work that was completed in 2022. Uh, but the second category of work that I talked about is the work that we do for Congress um, and for sponsors, where they're really looking for the National Academies and for TRB to provide advice for future legislation. And um, this uh, list gives you a flavor of what's on the minds of our members of Congress. And so um, one of the, the projects we're just starting as an example is the impacts of truck driver compensation methods on safety. Um, so there's been a, a real shortage of CDL drivers, um, which has highlighted the uh, impacts on our supply chain. Um, this sector is not adequately staffed, um, but one of the deterrents to pursuing um, a career path in commercial trucking is the current compensation uh, for those workers. And so that's the type of uh, research that TRB and the academies does as well. I'm really digging into um, the fundamentals of uh, the economics around um, our industry and ensuring that we have the policies that keep the traveling public safe, but also honor um, the level of commitment and dedication of our workers who support the industries. Um, here are some of the other uh, um, recent publications, and certainly uh, with the um, recent uh, rail car disaster, um, it further highlights the need for research and for those in decision making um, roles to actually adopt the recommendations from research into regulation and policy to keep everyone safe. Um, and these are some of the ongoing collaborations. Again, we're trying to bring to bear expertise across the National Academies, not just um, the expertise within our transportation community. And so uh, we are very fortunate. We partner with a number of our other program areas. Um, for example, the Division of Earth and Life Sciences. Um, we have a, a number of projects uh, that we work on with them around uh, recycling and materials technology. Um, certainly, uh, those are important topics as we think about a sustainable uh, construction industry as well as sustainable transportation solutions. Um, and these are just some of the ones that are coming soon. Um, a, a project that was funded in the Omnibus Appropriations Act uh, was an equity metrics uh, for surface transportation project. Um, so that's one that we're really eager to get started. Um, but given the complexity of that topic, um, it will be you know, a couple of years for us to assemble the appropriate panel and look at every aspect of equity in surface transportation. And um, one thing I wanted to stress today is that you know, everyone interested is invited. Um, that was the title of the book uh, that was published to celebrate 100 years of the Transportation Research Board. Um, and so you don't need to be um, an actual member of our committees to participate in the work that we do. Um, all of our meetings are public. And so uh, anybody who's been inspired uh, by what I've shared so far th this morning um, is encouraged to um, look for those opportunities to get engaged with TRB. Um, as was mentioned, we have an annual meeting in January each year here in Washington. And um, this is a picture from 2023. Uh, we had around 12,000 attendees 
uh, this past January. Um, we were very excited uh, to have that many participants. Um, a number of our international partners are still struggling uh, to secure visas for travel. And so we're not quite back to our pre pandemic levels in terms of attendance. Um, but that event to give you a sense has around 600 uh, plus sessions. Um, over 400 meetings of our committees and like I said, all of these events are open to everyone. So you can come in and follow the conversation um, at some point during uh, our peak sessions or, or sorry, peak times. We have more than 100 sessions going on concurrently. Um, so there really is something for everything or something for everybody. Um, and our community is extremely excited. This is an incredible time to work in transportation with the unprecedented level of investment. Um, with this focus on innovation and technology, um, we have a lot of excitement and enthusiasm in our industry right now. Um, but TRB is more than five days in January, and we have 11 conferences planned so far for 2023. Again, to give you a sense of what are the important transportation uh, topics of the day, um, I provided the list of upcoming conferences. Uh, but please, if there's a topic that resonates with you, consider attending. Um, resiliency and supply chains, uh, travel analysis and planning. Uh, these are topics that we worked on before, but certainly the pandemic um, and post pandemic trying to understand what the new normal is in terms of travel patterns. Uh, these are all the types of uh, discussions that we're having at these conferences. Um, and then we have literally dozens of committee and subcommittee meetings um, throughout the course of the year. Uh, so far in the first four months of the year, we have 34 webinars uh, that have either happened or are planned. Um, and all of our publications and information is out on our website um, and is available uh, in our, our database for free. Um, so anybody can access these materials. And if you're looking for information on the particular topic, we have what we call snap searches, which is um, a list of all the research that's been completed around a particular topic area. Um, so these uh, conferences that we're having might be you know, good opportunities for some of uh, you all to get engaged in the work of TRB. Um, but lastly, as I wrap up my remarks, um, please uh, visit our website, uh, mytrb.org. Um, if you're interested in the work of a committee, um, you can friend uh, that group and follow their discussions. And um, like I said, there is uh, access to so much information. Um, we uh, I think as TRB, because of how our cooperative research programs are funded, like I said earlier, we've had this much stronger uh, connection to the federal government and to state government, uh, but we truly have volunteers from every level of government participating in our committee work. Um, but we want to truly make sure that as we uh, work, uh, especially with some of uh, the entities who might be receiving federal funding for the first time through the bipartisan infrastructure law, that they are bringing to bear this tremendous body of work um, that has been completed. Um, and that's really our goal is to continue to meet the challenges of the future, uh, but also ensure that we're leveraging um, the experience and expertise uh, that has informed uh, the reports and publications that we have already issued in the past. So thank you again for the invitation to be here today, and um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you so very much, Victoria. I greatly appreciate the overview. Oh my goodness, who's that? Because it's snowing up here. <laughs> and that's my son uh, from when we were living in New Hampshire. It's a little snowier there than it is down here in DC. Okay. Uh, well, listen, thank you very, very much. I, um, I want to underscore uh, the, the value of TRB um, on a lot of different levels and those that haven't had a chance to uh, peruse their uh, offerings on mytrb.org. Um, I encourage you to do so. Um, but that said, I think we have, um, you know, the members of NIMTIC um, are very diverse. And I would offer to say that a number of the things that uh, TRB is actually doing research on, uh, whether it be um, related to land use planning, uh, climate resilience, technology advancing uh, the level of innovation. Uh, we've got a number of folks that have uh, already looking at, you know, how do we make sure that we look at mobility uh, on demand? Uh, when I say mobility, I'm not, what I, when I'm translating that to me is not just transit, but literally any kind of um, transportation offering uh, that we can actually access um, as we look at how we make some decisions around housing and land use and, and other things.
things, uh, certainly here in the state of New York. But that said, I do know that a number of our, um, these new technologies and innovative approaches uh, are being tested right now by some of our jurisdictions uh, with, uh, uh, you know, a lot of different, um, a lot of different ability um, and looking at demand uh, response services, et cetera. So I want to open it up to the, our members, see if there's any questions that anybody has for Victoria. I kind of gave you a little bit of a feed. Um, I hope uh, certainly for some of the jurisdictions that are engaged um, in some of these innovative practices, but open up the floor uh, for any questions that you may have for, uh, for Victoria. Maybe you can give an example of how we're actually using uh, some of these new technologies and approaches in um, whether it's uh, for on-demand services, um, anything that's, uh, you know, maybe we start with the, the trend that people I know some of our, um, some of our member agencies have been engaged in. If anybody wants to talk about what they're doing, that'd be great. All right, anybody want to take a look at uh, I'll ask a question looking into the next year what. Uh, uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about what you're what you're looking to roll out some of our, our jurisdictions uh, on Long Island. Uh, Suffolk uh, has had uh, some demand response services, um, certainly some things from the Long Island Railroad and I know in particular. Uh, my co chair Dan Brodnick was uh, talking about some of the. Uh, some of the land use uh, challenges that we have, anything that we'd like to see up and ask Victoria while we have her around these areas. Uh, well, good morning. Good morning. Uh, this is Darnell Tyson representing Suffolk County. Um, you know, I, I definitely enjoyed the presentation. Um, it sounds really exciting that uh, TRB is um, sort of engaging in a number of different um, a different different tracks. Um, I know that we at Suffolk presented our um, our electric vehicle plan uh, because we are making um, making moves towards electrifying our fleet. Uh, we presented at TRB last year, um, so it is just really interesting to hear about you know different um, initiatives that are underway. I mean, even even the idea of you know thinking about electric airplanes and you know having those at airports is really um, really interesting. Um, in Suffolk, uh, uh, we are looking at again electrification of our fleet, uh, um, also adopting a uh, a countywide strategic highway safety plan. Which is sort of building off of vision zero um, and a lot of, again, a lot of mobility and safety for um, our pedestrians, our transit users. So we definitely welcome um, the opportunity to be able to explore the data that TRB shares. So just say appreciate uh, the presentation. Thank you very much. Thanks, Darnell. All right. Hi, it's Mike Schiffer from MTA. I, I, I just want to send kudos as well to our colleagues at, at the TRB. It, it's such a rich and, and plentiful wealth of evidence-based knowledge and uh, information and innovation in transportation. And, and it, clearly for many, many of the transportation professionals who've been involved in the field for a long time know it very, very well. Uh, and if you're new to the field uh, or even just curious, uh, again, we, we, we certainly totally support uh, the, the great work that's been going on at, at, at the TRB in terms of helping uh, to take a very thoughtful look at, at uh, mobility uh, in, in all modes. Uh, and in particular, of course, uh, in our agency, we're, we're particularly interested in the good work that's been done by the TCRP. Thank you so much, Mike. I think we've got a lot of innovation uh, occurring across the board between ride sharing and connected and automated vehicle research that uh, that's going on, um, and actually leveraging a lot of the work that TRB has done. Um, you know, kind of in, in anticipation of not only uh, the electrification of our of our interstate 
um, opportunities uh, under what has been provided under the NEVI program with um, under the IIJA. Um, but Victoria, I'll ask a quick question of you, and that is with regard to electrification. Um, any sort of uh, trends that you might be able to elaborate on right now as you're seeing the implementation of um, the NEVI program? I mean, it's a mix of changes here, but anything that uh, you see is that you're starting to see it emerging. Um, perhaps you could share with us on the, on the TRB perspective. The NEVI funding, as you know, is focused on building out some of the backbone infrastructure. Um, the, the charging infrastructure on our nation's, you know, larger uh, roadways. Um, but a lot of the work uh, that we're doing and the conversations that are happening within the TRB community are around the rate of adoption and what are the other charging needs beyond those funded by the NEVI program. Um, you know, 85%, I believe, of charging is happening right now at home. Um, so the, the planning work that's necessary um, to think about uh, mainstreaming of this technology and, and how you know, building code should be updated so that um, we have charging uh, solutions uh, for every type of housing, as well as on-street charging. Of course, um, businesses and the commercial locations will continue to have charging infrastructure, um, but to really think about the network as a whole. Like I said, the first step, as far as the federal funding is concerned, is to build out um, that backbone to ensure that um, you can truly travel to every corner of this country and that no region gets left behind um, when it comes to you know, being accessible to these vehicles. But beyond that, it's, it's all the other types of charging and how we can have that complementary system that meets the needs of everyone. Right, thank you very much. Um, I think everybody's focused. Uh, I think we certainly in New York State, we've got a, a good eye. Our plan has been approved for the NEMI program, but it's filling in um, all those necessary uh, elements, whether that's uh, it's well beyond the home, home usage um, and how do we actually plan for it um, in buildings and, uh, and everything else. And so our, our Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act has provided us a good uh, Foundation for all of that, but I appreciate you elaborating on on what how TRB is looking at it because it's certainly uh, a much bigger um, view in terms of where we need to be and filling in those gaps moving forward. Um, okay, with that, are there any other questions for Victoria? All right, I want to say thank you very very much for your time this morning. We greatly appreciate you joining us, and uh, I'm sure you'll see many of us. Uh, not just in January at the next TRB session, but join you in uh, on a number of the uh, the convenings that you're sponsoring this year. Thank you very much, Victoria. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Um, we could not do the work of TRB without our 8,500 volunteers who support our committees, who participate in our research. Um, so please, if you're interested in getting engaged, um, mytrb.org. There's so many volunteer opportunities. Um, as well as tools and products that you uh, could be leveraging and using. So thank you uh, for giving me the chance to talk about who we are, as well as the important work that we're all doing together. Excellent. Thank you so much. All right, uh, moving on to our next agenda item. Um, uh, let me turn it over here uh, to uh, my co-chair, Director Dan Rodnick, who is going to go through um a couple things that we're going to take on great yeah. thank you um and i want to also thank uh, victoria again for uh being here and sharing those uh, uh those views and perspectives and, in, and new initiatives with us we really appreciate it um so we are now in the public participation uh portion of the agenda and we're going to hear from those who have elected to participate here in the order in which they registered to speak uh each Registered speaker is going to have three minutes to offer their statement, uh, and we ask you to kindly limit your comments to relevant transportation and planning related items. Our first registered speaker is Murray Bodine, who will provide his remarks from the meeting location. Uh, so whenever you are ready, we'll look forward to hearing from you, sir. I'm ready. If you can, you hear me? We're, yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Thank you. 
be nice if I could have my picture up as well. There are a number of issues that need to be addressed by the New York State Department of Transportation. There's this little thing called the Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices, which sets out the roles of the road. The line on the left is, the left line is generally yellow and on the right it's white. And a number of other issues. If you can't cross the left where there's a guardrail, then the line has to be yellow. New York State DOT has been unable to enforce that kind of issue. I don't know how to get the road safer. There needs to be a consistency of what the driver sees. The European crosswalk, the continental, the bar, always looks the same to the driver. New York State has the Z crosswalk, which doesn't look the same to the driver. I was in Lowe's uh, store in Yonkers. They had a crosswalk that was blue zebra from the handicapped spaces to the store. That crosswalk should have been a bar crosswalk shared by not only the handicapped, but people with carriages and children. There needs to be a new kind of thinking in New York State DOT. Safety counts. The driver is distracted. You all know when a light burns green, somebody doesn't move because they're texting. Now, we have to acknowledge that and then go on and say things have to be uniform. But the driver sees is always the same. How to change the crosswalks in New York State? The bar is legal. It's all over the rest of the world. Look at TV. You'll see crosswalks, parallel bars. Why don't we use it here? Because we don't. I'm going to be 90 in June. My time here is finished. It's going to be up to the younger generation, my grandchildren's generation, to make the roads safer. I can't do it. Somebody on this board's going to have to say, hey, New York State DOT, try and make the road safer. Do it right. Do it legally. Thank you. And one more thing, I want to thank all of those people who took the time to help me and teach me. I'm not that smart. Somebody help me do this. And thank you all. Bye. Thank you very much. We, we appreciate your, uh, your being here to share those views with us. Um, let me move on to the next registered speaker, who is Martin Buckman of the New York Bicycling Commission. Mr. Buckman, whenever you are ready, you may go ahead and proceed. We have Mr. Buckman. Andrea, I, I will uh, pose that question to you as to whether Mr. Buckman is here to testify or if we have other uh, speakers who are registered today. Hi, Mr. Buckman, are you, um, your microphone is on or off? I'm can you hear me now? Now we can hear you. Great. Okay, so my three minutes start now. My name is Go Martin ahead. Buckman. You got I'm it. From... <laughs> Fair enough. My name is Martin Buckman. I'm from New York Bike Coalition. I'm also the advocacy consultant for the Suffolk Bike Riders Association. I'm here to speak in support of pin number 001755, also known as the Great South Bay Greenway, a multi-use path that would run over the Robert Moses Causeway from Gardner Park to Cap Tree Park and link up with the Ocean um, Parkway Greenway, the great accomplishment of New York State that was built two years ago. The need, obviously, for a healthy, safe, green transport to the beach, a traffic alleviation during the summer. But most importantly, it's an equity issue. This Ocean Parkway Greenway is a state-sponsored, state-funded trail. Nassau County residents have a clear access by land through Cedar Creek Park. All our Suffolk County residents are asking for is a similar access um, to this trail. Otherwise, we have to drive to Cap Tree or drive to Cedar Creek 
and thus defeats the purpose of having a bike path. Um, the logistics. It, there is an extra lane on the Robert Moses Causeway already. It was put there as a, an emergency evacuation that can be used as a bike path. And then in an emergency, God forbid, it can still be used as an emergency evacuation. It's on the, obviously on the northbound side. Support, I spoke at the unveiling of this, public unveiling of this issue for County Executive Ballone. He uses me for whenever there's an announcement about bike activism or bike legislation. Since then, I have garnered support from State Senator Alexis Week, whose district it is in, it. State Assemblyman Michael Durso, whose district it is in, State um, Senate Transportation Chairman Kennedy, um, State Senator Martinez. All of these people at my request wrote letters to the DOT in strong support of this trail. I also have support from um, retired uh, officials, Steve Engelbright and Boyle. What's important is we have bipartisan support. Um, we have Democrats like Martinez and Republicans like Verso and Week in support of this. The request is to take this off the vision list um, and put it back on the current program. This request, this program was first introduced over 20 years ago. We won't be taking away any traffic lanes. The construction is fairly easy. The cost is reasonable. It's only um, we've estimated uh, at, at 11 million dollars, and um, I, I've garnered the political support for this. I don't know who to speak to in terms of getting the actual go ahead for this. I've got a petition of over 3000 signatures. Um, my buddy and partner in activism, Hal Terry has um, written an editorial in the um, Newsday in support of this. Uh, we have numerous elected officials in support. I haven't heard anyone against it. I'm not, I'm wondering why this hasn't um, been taken forward. So I'm asking whoever has the power on this committee um, that this is something that the public would really enjoy. Coming out of the pandemic, more and more people have been looking for outdoor safe ways to enjoy with the rise of e-bikes. This could be a major transportation to the beach, but once again, all Suffolk County residents are asking for is the same access to this New York State funded trail, the Ocean Bay Parkway Greenway that Nassau County residents already have. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much, Mr. Buckman. Uh, okay, Andrea, are there other registered speakers today? No, there are not. Okay, well, thank you very much and uh, to those uh, to Mr. Bodine and Mr. Buckman, who were with us today, we appreciate your time and your attention. Uh, we're now going to move to the next item on our agenda today, which is uh, the uh, acceptance of the uh, 20, uh, the October 13, 2022 meeting synopsis. Uh, all material that's related to the action items that we're about to cover have been posted on the NIMTIC website at www nimtic.org and the first action as i noted is to accept the synopsis of the meeting of october 13 2022 and as we move through these action items i just want to ask that voting members announce your name and the agency that you represent when you either make a motion or second a motion so with that i will ask if there is a motion to accept the october 13 2022 meeting synopsis Stephen Powers from Rockland County moves it. Thank you, Rockland, for your motion. May I have a second? Is that is that my friend George Latimer seconded? I I, I think I I could see you motioning, but I uh, but I you were on mute. Okay, I second the motion from Westchester County, Dan. Good to see you and thank you very much, Mr. Latimer. Is there any discussion of the motion? Any objections? Hearing none, the meeting synopsis is accepted. Thank you all. The next item on our agenda is the adoption uh, of resolution 2023-1, council adoption of state fiscal year 2023 to 2024 unified planning work program. I'm going to ask at this moment, Setu Allen of NIMTIC staff to give us an overview of the program. 
uh, and say to uh, when whenever you are ready, please go ahead and begin. And as I understand it, you're giving your presentation from the meeting location and following the presentation. Of course, we will seek a motion to adopt uh, this work program. So say to whenever you're ready. Thank you. Uh, great. Thank you, director. Just want to confirm that you can hear me we and can. see my screen. And we can see your screen too. Yes. Great. Thank you. So thank you, uh, NIMTIC Council. This will be a brief overview of NIMTIC's Unified Planning Work Program for the state fiscal year 2023 through 2024. So first off, uh, what is the Unified Planning Work Program? This work program serves as NIMTIC's annual budget. It is updated each year, and the program describes how NIMTIC will use federal transportation planning funds throughout its planning area. The UPWP is guided by the shared goals that were defined or identified in NIMTIC's long range transportation plan moving forward. And those goals include safety and security, ensuring a reliable and easy travel system, uh, planning for changing demand, reducing environmental impacts of the transportation system, and also the resiliency of the transportation system. Now, through the UPWP, NIMTIC funds two types of activities. One is the core program, and the core program can be thought of as what NIMTIC has to do as an MPO per federal requirements and regulations. Uh, within this core program, we have activities such as developing or maintaining the regional transportation plan, and that will be a key activity for the upcoming fiscal year as NIMTIC will begin development of its next regional transportation plan, which will cover a period through the year 2025. Uh, each year, we also update the annual unified planning work program. And through this program, we, of course, comply with federal requirements as well as try to identify and define improvements for the transportation system through our discretionary program. We also have the maintenance and amendments to the transportation improvement program. This program defines the schedule and funding for transportation improvement projects with, throughout the region. Uh, we also have the congestion management process and regional emissions analyses. And this process involves looking at the projects and programs that are programmed in the TIP and the regional transportation plan and trying to assess the impacts these investments will have on emissions throughout the region. And finally, we have, of course, the implementation of transportation improvements throughout the region. Uh, one other big activity that will be coming up over the next state fiscal year will be NIMTIC's upcoming regional household travel survey. This will be the first time NIMTIC has done a major survey in about 10 years. In addition to the core program, NIMTIC also funds through the UPWP a discretionary program, and these discretionary projects help NIMTIC to further its planning priorities and achieve the goals of the long range plan. So for this year's UPWP, there are more than 50 activities programmed. Most of these are managed by the member agencies, although some studies are managed by NIMTIC staff. And through the next two slides, just a brief overview of some of the shared topics that emerged through the projects that were programmed into next year's UPWP. Some of those themes or shared topics include safety, uh, freight studies. NIMTIC typically funds quite a few sub area studies throughout the region. Uh, NIMTIC also looks at data analysis and forecasting. And one thing I'd like to point out is through the MTA, through U the UPWP funding, uh, we have the geospatial mobility database replica access, and that tool is being shared amongst the MTA, uh, New York State DOT, and all of the New York State MPOs. Uh, we also continually look at transit improvements throughout the region, and we have several studies addressing those issues as well. So in terms of the funding allocation for this year's UPWP, it's $62 million, roughly evenly split between new funds and old funds. Roughly 60% of that goes to NIMTIC staff, which is primarily for core program work, and the remaining 40% goes to the member agencies. And much of that is passed through for discretionary work, but the member agencies do also support, greatly support NIMTIC's core program throughout the year. So I guess a uh, thank you to all the member agencies and your staff and also NIMTIC staff for the development of this work program. It really is a collaborative effort. And at this time, NIMTIC staff would like to request that uh, the NIMTIC Council adopt the 23-24 
Unified Planning Work Program. Thank you. Great. Thank you for that. Let me see if there are any questions for you, say two. Seeing no questions, um, I will uh, ask for a motion to adopt the council adoption of the state fiscal year 2020-23 unified planning work program. Is there a motion? By Darnell Tyson, Suffolk County, I'd like to make that motion. Thank you, Suffolk County, for the motion. Is there a second? Hi, David Viana, representing NASA County Executive Bruce Blickman, making a second. Right. Suffolk and NASA making it happen. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, is there any discussion of the motion? Seeing none, we're now going to vote by roll call, starting with the lower Hudson Valley. So uh, I'm going to call you by county. So please uh, vote when you are called. First, Putnam County. Uh, Tully representing County Executive Byrne, Putnam County, aye. Putnam County, aye. Rockland County? Stephen Powell is aye. Thank you, Rockland, aye. Westchester County? George Latimer, aye. Thank you, George, aye. Long Island now, Nassau, Suffolk. We know you're here, Nassau, go ahead. Steve Viana representing County Executive Bruce Blakeman, aye. Thank you, Suffolk County? Darnell. You, you muted out for one second. Can you just do that one more time? I apologize. Darnell Tyson, aye. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, New York City Department of Transportation, DOT. You'll get Sangui, aye. Great. Thank you. Department of City Planning, aye. And finally, the Metropolitan Transportation Authority. Mike Schiffer, uh, representing MTA and Chair Jano Lieber, aye. Thank you very much. And New York State DOT? Aye. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks to everybody. The motion passes unanimously. And uh, Commissioner Dominguez, I'm going to go back to you. Okay. Thank you very much. Our next action item is to adopt resolution 2023 2. Um, it is, uh, it's actually my honor uh, recognizing the service of NIMTIC co chair, New York City Department uh, Planning Director. Dan Garodnik, uh, as he as he has done such an outstanding job uh, this last year, we really appreciate uh, all the work that you've done, uh, Director Garodnik. Um, your service, your guidance uh, to the council's co-chairs uh, over this last year, this certainly an important program planning year, and um, we really do appreciate your commitment. So uh, you served with distinction. Uh, I think you've provided extremely valuable counsel and guidance to. Uh, to our entire team, uh, and I really want to thank you, um, and I look forward to not just continuing to work with you, but uh, the incredible guidance and, uh, and uh, good vision that you always share. Um, so, uh, I just wanted to open it up and ask for a motion that we uh, not only honor, but recognize uh, the service of, uh, of Dan Grodnick uh, to NIMTIC. So, with that, do I have a motion on the floor. So moved. George Latimer, Westchester County. Dan's done a fabulous job. In fact, Dan, if you want a second term, I'll defer. <laughs> <laughs> You're very kind. Thanks, George. It's, it's all you. <laughs> all right. Do I have a second? <coughs> all right. Diana. From Nassau County, uh, representing Nassau County Executive Bruce Blakeman, second. Great, thank you, Nassau County. All right, any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes. Dan, again, I just want to thank you for your service. Greatly thank appreciate you. it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, next, let's move to uh, another recognition of service uh, by former Putnam County Executive Mary Ellen O'Dell. Uh, who's uh, the principal member of NIMTIC. Uh, she's provided uh, outstanding service. I understand she's not with us today, um, but I do want to uh, advise that this resolution expresses NIMTIC's appreciation to Mary Ellen for her 
12 years of service as a principal member of the council it really is quite extraordinary during her tenure as a principal member she served as council co-chair for consecutive terms uh, she's been extremely active as a council principal with a, a regional vision um, and she's really helped advance the NIMTIC process and really sought to shape the future of not just her county, but the larger metropolitan region. And we, we really do appreciate her service. So with that, I wanna thank her and wish her all the best. Can I get a motion to uh, adopt this resolution in honor of Mary Ellen? Christina Powers from Rockland County moves it. Thank you, may I have a second? George Latimer wishes to county an enthusiastic second for Mary Ellen, my neighbor to the north. Okay, any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes. Congratulations and thank you again to Mary Ellen and Zell for your service. All right, the next uh, item we have is the adoption of resolution 2023-4, uh, recognition of outstanding service by Ms. Lynn Weisskopf, who has served as NIMTIC secretary and PFAC chair. I have to tell you, it's bittersweet for me personally and all of us at uh, New York State DOT. Uh, Lynn has uh, not only been uh, an incredible uh, colleague, but her professionalism across the board at New York State DOT and certainly in service to NIMTIC has truly been extraordinary. Her role in coordinating uh, and guiding uh, New York State's Metropolitan Planning Organization as secretary and um, secretary to the council, but also as chair of PFAC has truly been, as I said, extraordinary. She's had 30 years of service to the state. Um, and uh, today is actually uh, her last official day in the office. Um, I will tell you that, uh, you know, talking to Lynn um, on a daily basis and getting her good guidance and counsel on a number of issues, policy and otherwise, uh, she really does represent that level of knowledge, continuity, and expertise uh, that our state has truly benefited from uh, across her many years of service. Um, and I, for one, am very grateful, but this resolution captures uh, her service directly to, to NIMTIC. So thank you again, Lynn, for all of your great work. Um, we're gonna miss you, um, but you've built an incredible legacy and we thank you for all that you've done for New York State, uh, certainly in the transportation arena alone. With that, may I have a motion to advance this recognition in honor of Lynn Weisskopf. Putnam County would like to make that motion. Thank you very much, Putnam County. May I have a second? Darnell Tyson from Suffolk County would like to second that. Thank you, Suffolk County. Any discussion? All right, any objections? Otherwise, hearing none, the motion passes. Lynn, thank you very much for your service. Thank you, Commissioner. And thank you everyone on the board. I, I uh, do appreciate this recognition and this honor. Uh, the, it's really been a pleasure for me to be able to serve as secretary of NIMTIC over the, the last year. Uh, the work that you all do is, is so important and it's truly been an honor and a privilege to work with you. So again, thank you so much. I will say that Lynn is, uh, Lynn is one of those people that she's often behind the scenes, but she's what makes the, the engine churn forward here. Uh, she's got a great vision and a, an incredible uh, work ethic. So thank you again, we wish you the best. Um, and uh, hopefully you will not be a stranger. All right, our next, uh, our next order of business here is to uh, welcome our, uh, our new co-chair, George Latimer, Westchester County Executive. Um, George, it's, uh, we're very grateful uh, that you are uh, coming into service here as co-chair for NIMTIC. And per the memo of understanding for the council, the co-chair is rotated annually among the three NIMTIC transportation coordinating committees. Last year, the co-chair was selected from New York City Transportation Coordinating Committee, and this year, uh, the co-chair has been selected from the Mid-Hudson South Transportation Coordinating Committee. So, Westchester County Executive George Latimer has been voted uh, to be the co-chair for this new program year, uh, and we are thrilled to have him in service. Uh, he is not only uh, a seasoned executive, um, but uh, has a great vision in transportation. And so county executive, let me turn it over to you. If you would like to say a few words, welcome to the 
to the co-chair position. Well, thank you very much, Commissioner. <clears throat> I very much look forward to working with you over the course of the next year as we have on other issues that have linked the state and our county. And, uh, I, I'm very much uh, appreciative of the support of the team that I have in Westchester County. Joan McDonald, the former state commissioner of DOT, who's our director of operations. Emily Saltzman, who's our deputy uh, director of operations and a host of other individuals with both state and county experience. We will lean on them so that uh, we hopefully will be a productive partner over the course of the next year. Uh, I want to thank Dan Gorodnik for his outstanding work. I've known Dan for a long, long time. I've watched his work in the city council before going into the city administration, and he is a true leader. And, uh, and that leadership continues in the city of New York. It's very important to your northern neighbors in Westchester. And so uh, we appreciate uh, the continuing relationship with Dan and his responsibilities. And in the past, Mary Ellen O'Dell, Laura Curran, all of the other individuals that have served as co-chairs during my tenure as, a, as an active member here. Um, the, uh, the council members, the NIMTIC staff, the public, all part of this process. And, uh, and uh, you know, some of the folks in the public who comment are people that I have met with and will continue to have that dialogue so we have the input commissioner that we need to have for these discussions. For those of us who are in the suburbs, in my case, Westchester, we, we really understand the value and the importance of transportation. One of the key uh, reasons why people choose to live where we live is because there's uh, uh, easy transportation in and out of the major city and then transportation within our counties so that you can get from Westchester to Rockland and, and out to Long Island as easily as you can get in and out of New York City. And it, it's a battle, but I grew up in this county, in Westchester County, but I've lived elsewhere. Lived in the suburbs outside of Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., Virginia suburbs. I've lived outside of Cleveland. And when I came back to New York, I, I appreciated all the more the nature of the transportation hub that we have, the mass transit, uh, the rail, the, the, the buses, and also the road system, and for that matter, the airport system that really serves this region well and how this is part of a process that we have to protect and advance on a continuing basis. Here in Westchester, we have the second largest bus system, second largest ridership uh, in the bus system in the state after, of course, New York City, our B-Line bus system. Uh, we have been working uh, and have reached an 88% conversion of our bus fleet into hybrid or electric buses. Uh, we were the first bus system, to my knowledge, to suspend fares during the summer and the holiday seasons. About four out of the 12 months of this past year, we were able to suspend fares and absorb that cost. We've completed an important passenger survey, which is, which is critical because as we look at the uh, uh, Omni system that's coming, we, we saw in that survey that a third of our bus riders use cash as a method of payment. And so we have to look at the changes that are going to be necessary to better integrate our system, our B-Line bus system, which does reach uh, the New York City subways and serves the uh, MTA commuter rail. We know that we've got a direct relationship with our friends in Putnam and Dutchess County through the three Metro North lines that we share and the road system that we have. And uh, I myself have commuted regularly over the bridge uh, to Rockland County, and I know that's a relationship that we also have to work on uh, in, and, uh, in and above that. We, uh, we're responsible on the ground, at least, for Westchester County Airport, which is a regional uh, transportation hub north of the city. We have our pressures, and we have our responsibilities uh, in that area. We've made a commitment in EV charging stations in our county, uh, and we see that the Patterns for Progress report is going to uh, put an emphasis on that on a regional basis so that we can try to advance where we can there. We're completely committed to complete streets. I voted for it as a legislator when I was in Albany as a state legislator, and now we have the, the challenge to try to implement it. Uh, and all of these things are works in progress. They, these, will, these will not be uh, completed in any way, shape, or form during the next year when I have the opportunity to serve as co-chair, but hopefully we'll be a productive partner, and I look forward to working with all the members in, uh, in as on ha a hands-on way as is possible. Commissioner, thank you for your leadership, and look forward to working with you. Very much looking forward to working with you, County Executive uh, Latimer, and uh, thank you for for those remarks. It gives everybody perspective uh, and well-informed perspective about uh, the uh, the bold vision that you're executing in in Westchester. Again, I want to thank Dan, uh, Dan uh, for your uh, for your leadership this past year. Um, and with that, I believe uh, we are in a position to conclude today's meeting uh, and I would ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. For Westchester. Rodnick okay. City Planning second. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyone object?
All right, hearing no objections, I just want to say the motion passes. I want to thank the NIMTIC staff uh, for all of their good work and putting uh, all of our plan together. And uh, we've got a great way forward here for the next five years. Um, and uh, look forward to seeing you all and work towards execution uh, of our plan. So thank you all for the unified plan and um, we'll see you all very soon. Take care. Bye everybody. Bye. Take care. Take care everyone.